Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at parallel lines. This is GCSE aimed at roughly about grade six. The only thing you've got to remember really is that the gradient is the same. OK, so please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this video we're looking at um, parallel lines, so please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. I'm going to go through the whole worksheet and you can, if you want to, download this particular worksheet from the website which is 3 Minute Maths. .co.uk and there is a link in the description below. Okay, so it says write down the equation of a line parallel to y equals 4x plus 4. So really, all we mean is, is that parallel means the same gradient. Okay, so the gradient on this particular line is 4. So actually, if you're going to write a parallel line, then it would be something like y equals 4x. And then you can have plus anything you like, really. So it could be uh, plus 8 or minus 200. It doesn't really matter because this is effectively the y-intercept. So if the gradient is the same. It's parallel to this particular line. That's perfectly fine. And then the rest of it doesn't really matter what you write down. Okay, so uh, number two, write down the equation of a line parallel to that which passes through zero minus four. So effectively what we've got here is this is the equation, the standard equation of a line which is y equals mx plus c where m is the gradient and plus c is the y-intercept. So if I kind of sketch this out, what effectively we've got is we've got a line, this one here, we've got a line that goes through plus 4 and it's got a gradient of 4 okay so what they're asking us to do is to write the equation of the line which is parallel and otherwise it's got the same gradient but it goes through this time minus 4 which is this one down here okay so all we would simply write would be y equals 4x minus 4 and that would be the answer to the question Okay, let's move on then. So, uh, find the gradient of line parallel. Now, what they've done here is that they've really just made the line um, just very difficult to actually see. Now, you remember before I said that you need to have it in this format. So what we're going to do is take this bit of information and just manipulate it so we get y equals mx plus c. Hopefully you'll see what I mean in a minute. So at the moment, I've got 4y plus 2x plus 6 equals 0. Well, I want these two terms to be on the right-hand side. So I can write that as 4y equals... 2x minus 6. Now, if you're not sure how I've done that, then please do refer to some of the linear equations um, videos on the playlists. So minus 2x goes to the right hand side becomes plus 2x because I've added 2x to both sides. And then plus 6 becomes minus 6 on this side because I've minus 6 to both sides of the equal sign. But again, please be very careful about these. You need to make sure you get the signs correct. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is divide both sides by four. So I'm gonna get y equals two x minus six divided by four. Okay, now the difficulty with this is we're still not in the form y equals mx plus c, which is what we're actually looking for. So. Effectively, what we mean by this is that both of these terms have been divided by 4. So I could write it as 2x over 4 minus 6 over 4, and that would be perfectly fine. Now, let's just then just tidy this up a little bit. Well, as I'm sure you appreciate, 2 over 4 can be reduced to a half. So this would be y equals 
uh, I'll write it here actually, y equals a half x, and then this minus 6 over 4 could be written as minus 3 over 2, or if you prefer, minus 1 and a half. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so this is now in the form that we need in order to appreciate that the gradient is a half, so therefore, if the line that's parallel is going to be a half as well, and this in this particular case is the y-intercept. So um, I could draw a little sketch as I've done here, okay, and I could put this down as minus 3 over 2. So to answer this particular question, um, a line which is therefore parallel, okay, a line which is parallel is going to have the same gradient, y equals a half x, and rather than minus 3 over 2 or minus 1 and a half, I'm just going to make that plus 3, and that's perfectly fine, okay, it doesn't really matter at all. Okay, so let's move on then to question number four. Please, as always, stop the video, have a go at each of these questions, and then compare your solutions. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll always come back to you. Okay, so number four is pretty much the same, really. What we need to do is put that into the form of y equals mx plus c. Okay, and I suggest you always do this just as a matter of course, just much, much easier to say, well, in that case, we've got 4y equals 2x minus 6. So it's not unlike the one that we had above, okay? <laughs> so we've already done it. We can manipulate this. It's absolutely fine. We can write this as y equals 2x minus 6 over 4, which, as we did before, becomes 2x over 4 minus 6 over 4. And that would therefore be y equals a half x minus 3 over 2. Okay, now just for the sake of clarity, um, what I want to do is just convert this also to a decimal because sometimes I think I mean my when I first learned maths I did a lot of fractions so I kind of see these fractions okay but I don't think everybody does now so if I convert that to y equals 0.5x minus 1.5 that's exactly the same okay it's perfectly fine to do it however what we said on this particular line is it passes through the point 0 minus 1.5 this is actually the y intercept so if I drew this on a uh, sketch again, this line would be something is about like that, okay, where this is minus 1.5, okay, and it's a gradient of a half. So what they're asking us to do is to change that to a line that passes through 0, 3. So in other words, it's this line here which goes through 3, okay, and therefore this line would be y equals a half x, and in this case, plus 3. Okay, so it's actually much the same as the one that we had above. Okay, so um, if you prefer, I can write this as y equals a half, uh, 0 0.5x plus 3. If you prefer, it really doesn't matter. But the main thing is it passes through the y-intercept of plus 3. Three. Okay, let's move on then to question number five. Please do stop the video. Have a go at this particular question. Again, it's very, very similar in its approach and the way that we do things. So um, effectively, what we're saying is that uh, we've got this awful kind of way of writing the line. We need to write that as 2y equals, I'm going to make that 3x, positive 3x minus 5. Okay, so again, I'm going to divide through by 2, y equals 3x minus 5 over 2, which is exactly the same as saying 3x over 2 minus 5 over 2. OK, now again, you might prefer to see this as a decimal. It certainly may be a little bit easier to visualise. Well, 3 over 2x... Well, that's going to be y equals 1.5x, and 5 over 2 is minus 2.5, OK? So effectively, we've got, again, if I just very briefly sketch this, we've got a gradient of 1.5, and it's going through this uh, y-intercept, which is minus 2.5, OK? However, they want us to put it through minus 4. So in this particular case, it's going to go like that. It's got the same gradient, 
minus 4. OK, so the answer to the question is therefore y equals 1.5x, same gradient, but this time minus 4. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Please do uh, add a comment below if you're not sure about anything on these types of video, on these types of questions. OK, we're going to carry on on this video. It seems that three minute maths is very rapidly becoming 12 or 13 minute maths. OK, but the whole idea is that you kind of learn these things in a couple of minutes and then you just keep practicing. Let's move on then to question number six. OK, so question number six, a line A passes through those points. Find the equation of a line parallel to line A that passes through 8, 12. OK, so this is, again, uh, one of these types of sort of grade six type questions. Just takes a little bit of working through. But you'll remember that really what we're interested in is the form of y equals mx plus c. Now, m is the gradient. And the way in which we can work out the gradients is the difference in y divided by the difference in x. If I just sort of sketch this out, what effectively we've got is a line that passes through, say, 4, 3, OK, and then uh, 8, 6 is something like that, OK, and it's got this kind of feel to it. It's something like that, yeah? And what we're looking for is exactly the same gradient of line, but this time it's going to pass through 8, 12. So it's up here somewhere and it's going to go like that somewhere. OK, so let's have a look and work out the gradient. Well, lots of people can, you know, uh, maybe you've been taught to sort of sketch a little right angle triangle there and you've got the difference in y, which is 3, divided by the difference in x, which is 4. OK, some people will have it as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And this is actually the more useful way of doing it. OK, so what we're saying is, is that y2 is 6 and y1 is 3. So we're going to get 6 minus 3, exactly the same as y2, y1 divided by x2, which is 8 div uh, minus 4. OK, so the gradient of this particular line is going to be three quarters. OK, so what we've got now is the equation where we know that y equals three quarters of x plus c. But what we need to do is find out this intercept. However, we're not really interested in this intercept. What we're interested in is the intercept of the new line that passes through the point, and unfortunately I'm not drawing it particularly well, but through the point 8, 12. OK, so it's actually this intercept that we're going to be interested in. Now, you could theoretically, I guess, just sketch it out like that and, and try to sort of use graph paper or something. But perhaps a better way of doing it would be to say that you know the value of y is 12 and you know the value of x is 8. So therefore, we can just plug it straight into this and work out the value of c. And this is so therefore when we've got 8 12. Well, that's going to be mean that y is 12 and we've got three quarters of 8, which is the value of x plus c. OK, so if I then work all that out, what I end up with is going to be 12 equals 6 plus c. OK, take 6 away from both sides. I've got C equals 6. OK, so therefore the equation of the line now that passes through the points 8, 12 is going to be Y equals same gradient, 3 quarters of X, but the Y intercept is plus 6. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Uh, we'll move on through to question number seven. There are additional videos on the playlist that have very similar sort of uh, questions. And please do uh, let me know or have a look on the channel. And there are other questions that are very similar to this. OK, I'll also add them into the playlist as well. OK, so line A passes through those points, line B. This is where really this whole idea of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, exactly the same as we did on the first question. So this thing here is going to be useful for us with this, because effectively what we've got is line A. And all we're interested in is that whether they are parallel. So we're not interested in writing it out as y equals mx plus c. We're only interested in the gradients. And if the gradient is the same, 
they must be parallel to each other. So, okay, line A, I'm going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I've got y2 is 6, y1 is 2, x2 is 4, x1 is 1. Okay, so I'm going to get 6 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. So 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 and 4 minus 1 is going to be 3. So therefore, the gradient of line A is going to be 1.3 recurring, or if you prefer, 4 over 3. All right, let's have a look at line B, and we're going to use exactly the same principle. So line B, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, let's have a look then. So we've got 11 minus 7 divided by 6 minus 4. Okay, well, 11 minus 7 is going to be 4, and 6 minus 4 is going to be 2, so the gradient is 2. Okay, so we've got two gradients, therefore they are not parallel because they are not the same. Okay, and if you wanted to write some line in that says the gradient is 1.3 recurring or 2, okay, therefore they are not parallel, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so we're going to finish up with the final question, which is question number eight. It has actually been a lot longer video than I thought it would be, but, you know, hopefully these are useful for you. So, uh, line A passes through the points 1, 1, I think that is, and 4, 7. Oh, dear. Okay, <laughs> I need to change this particular question. So, that is 1, 1, and 4, 7. Seven. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. It'll save me having to stop the video. Okay, I will change this on the actual worksheet. Okay, so let's have a look at line A. And again, we know that they're parallel, and if they are parallel, we just need to kind of figure out the actual gradient itself. So line A, I've got y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, that's going to be equal to 7 minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1. So therefore, the gradient of this line is 6 over 3 or 2. OK, now we know therefore that the gradient of line B is also 2, and we know it passes through these coordinates. OK, so let's have a look at that and make sure we're OK with that. So therefore, line B, which is the same gradient, means that um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 must equal 2, it's the same gradient. OK, so let's start filling in some numbers and see where we end up. Well, we know that y2 is 14 and y1 is 7, so 14 minus 7. And we know that x2 is k and x1 is 4. OK, and that equals 2. So let's have a look at what we can actually do with this. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply now, this is a technique that I've used on several other videos before. So what we can do, imagine that that is 2 over 1. So I can cross multiply across. And what it means then is I get 14 minus 7 times 1. Well, that's just going to be 7. And then I've got two lots of k minus 4. OK, so let's just um, expand that and work that out. So 2k minus 8. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. 2k equals 15 and therefore k must equal 7.5. And actually, that would be the answer to this particular question. Now, what you could do if you wanted to is put this number back in to here and then work out the gradients, and hopefully, I'm fairly sure you do, you would end up with two as the actual gradient itself. Okay, so a bit of a long video. Sorry it's gone on a little bit longer than I thought it would have done. I hope it's been useful to you. Apologies about the error there. I will correct that on the, uh, on the worksheet. Um, please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything. Always come back to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.